Good day. Welcome to this adventure. Let's take a stroll around Mars and discover 10 awesome facts about the Red Planet. Are you ready? All right, let's get into it. Mars is the only habitable planet beyond Earth. According to astronomers, our solar system has two types of planets, terrestrial planets or gas giants. Gas giants are filled with poisonous gases, and we can't land on them because, after all, they don't have a solid surface. Gas giants include Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Terrestrial planets have a rocky surface. We could land on them. They include Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So, We've already ruled out half of the planets from our little list of potential places to colonize. Of the remaining four, only Earth supports life as far as we know, but Mars is right there in second place. Forget about Venus and Mercury, they just want to kill us. It's true that, although Mars can sustain life forms like ours, the environment isn't entirely welcoming by nature. We'll need special equipment and facilities to survive. Scientists have even proposed the creation of an artificial magnetic field by placing a magnetic generator between Mars and the Sun. This way, the planet would be protected from solar storms. Mars has four seasons. Mars, much like Earth, undergoes seasonal changes due to the tilt of its axis in relation to the plane of its orbit around the Sun. However, the seasons on Mars are longer than those on Earth due to its more distant orbit and longer orbital period. The seasons on Mars are similar to those on Earth, but with some notable differences. They are Spring, similar to spring on Earth, when the northern hemisphere of Mars tilts toward the Sun. Summer, the hot season when the hemisphere tilted toward the Sun experiences higher temperatures. Autumn, similar to autumn on Earth, when the northern hemisphere begins to move away from the sun. Winter, the cold season when the hemisphere away from the sun experiences lower temperatures. The seasons on Mars last about 6.8 Earth months each, due to the planet's longer orbital period. Additionally, the weather conditions on Mars, such as dust storms and extreme temperature variations, can be quite different from those on Earth influencing the specific characteristics of each Martian season. A day on Mars is a bit more than a day here. As you might recall from the third grade, a day is the period determined by the time it takes for a planet to rotate around its axis. Planets that take longer to complete a full rotation have longer days than those with faster cycles. And, of course, the length of a day varies greatly from one planet to another. On Earth, a day lasts 24 hours, on Jupiter, it's 9 hours, 55 minutes, and 29.69 seconds, on Venus, it's 116 Earth days and 18 hours, on Pluto, it's 6 Earth days and 4 hours, and on Mars, it's 24 hours and 40 minutes. Given the disparity between Earth's duration and that of other planets, and the differences between our structure and that of Mars, how come Earth and Mars have days with such similar lengths? Just pure coincidence. If you're enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Drop a link below to support us. Cheers! Plants can be grown on Mars, but it depends. According to NASA and the book movie The Martian, we can have agriculture on Mars. In an experiment conducted in partnership with the International Potato Center in Peru, NASA managed to plant potatoes in an environment that replicated Mars' harsh climate. But truth be told, some consider the experiment inconclusive due to the soil used. On that occasion, the soil from the Pampas de la Joya Desert in Peru was chosen and had to be sterilized to kill all forms of life, thus simulating real Martian terrain. However, some fear that even after sterilization, some microbes may have survived and helped in the plant's growth. Another point from skeptics, 
the potatoes used were grown from cuttings of other potatoes instead of seeds. In practice, this will be a problem since it's impossible to transport potato cuttings to Mars without damaging the cells, making planting impossible. In a similar experiment at Villanova University, some students grew lettuce, kale, garlic, and hops, but not potatoes. The tubers died because the soil was too thick. Similar to NASA's experiment, the students used volcanic basalt soil instead of Mars iron rich soil, regolith. While the basalt was processed to mimic regolith, it didn't quite replicate the real thing. And another thing, regolith isn't safe for planting because it contains perchlorate, which can be deadly to humans, but don't be alarmed. The toxic substance can be removed by washing the regolith in water or exposing it to some perchlorate eating bacteria. Using bacteria is the better option because it still produces oxygen during the process. The sun is another factor that needs to be considered before we can plant on Mars. The red planet receives only half the amount of sunlight that reaches Earth. A significant portion of that sunlight is already blocked by Mars' dusty atmosphere. Even if scientists solve this, they still need to figure out how to deal with the dangerous ultraviolet radiation hitting Mars directly from the sun. Mars might have life. Although we haven't found life on Mars, yet, scientists suspect that the red planet may have or once had some form of living organisms. Curiosity, one of the rovers currently exploring the surface of Mars, has revealed the presence of organic molecules in some rocks in Gale Crater which was a lake 3.5 billion years ago. Every living organism contains four organic molecules, proteins, nucleic acids, fats, and carbohydrates. Without them, an organism cannot exist, at least not an organism as we know it. While the existence of these molecules could point to life on Mars, we know that some non-living things also produce these molecules, making the discovery inconclusive. However, scientists have found something else that tips the scales towards evidence of life on Mars, methane. Living things produce methane. Most of the methane on Earth, for example, is produced by living organisms. And here's the most interesting part, methane only lasts a few hundred years in the atmosphere, meaning something is releasing, or released very recently, in methane into the atmosphere of Mars. Scientists theorize that methane is released through chemical reactions. Interestingly, they have noted that Mars's methane production increases in summer and decreases in winter, which is not observed among living organisms on Earth. Mars has its own aurora. You know those amazing lights that can be seen at the Earth's poles known as the Aurora Borealis and Aurora Australis? Well, the colorful lights of the aurora are not exclusive to our planet. That's because an aurora can appear on any planet, provided the conditions are met, and Mars meets them. There's just one detail, while we see colorful lights when this happens here on Earth, a resident of Mars won't see the same show as us because the Martian aurora emits ultraviolet light, which is invisible to the human eye. Researchers have been able to observe this light with a special device attached to the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Mission, MAVEN, a spacecraft. Here on Earth, auroras are caused by charged electric particles colliding with the atmosphere. Click here for an in-depth description. On Mars, they are caused by solar wind containing protons colliding with the hydrogen cloud around Mars. To not a see a Martian aurora borealis, you'd have to go there yourself, as it won't be possible from Earth. A magnetic field deflects the solar wind from our planet to a greater extent than what happens on the red planet. Similar cases are Venus and Titan, one of Saturn's moons, that don't have their own magnetic fields, just like Mars. Mars has water. In 2008, NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO, discovered water flowing on some slopes of Mars. The water only flows in the summer, meaning that during the winter, it is frozen. 
As mentioned earlier, Martian summer is much colder than Earth's summer. However, streaks on Mars have been found where water traces reach temperatures as low as minus 23 degrees Celsius. Does anyone else think that water at this temperature should be frozen? Why does this happen? Why does water flow? Scientists are not sure, but they have hypotheses. The leading one involves the high salt content in Martian water. Salty water has a lower freezing point than fresh water, allowing it to melt at certain temperatures where drinkable water would remain frozen. An alternative theory is that water is created after salt comes into contact with ice, as salt melts ice. Better explanations may be provided once scientists can identify the water source. For now, they are assuming that the water originates from melting ice, underground water, or condensed water vapor from the atmosphere. Mars has polar caps and glacier. Like Earth, the north and south poles of Mars are covered by polar caps. However, in the northern and southern hemispheres, Mars also has glacier belts at central latitudes, and we just hadn't seen them yet because they were hidden beneath the notorious dust layer. This same dust might be the reason why the glacier haven't evaporated. Mars has a very low atmospheric pressure, causing any surface water or ice to evaporate immediately. The ice should sublimate directly to the gaseous state without passing through the liquid state. Scientists have determined that Mars contains more than 150 billion cubic meters of ice, enough to cover the entire surface of the planet with a one meter thick layer. Whether this ice is made of frozen water, mud, or carbon dioxide is another issue. Even if it's water, is it the same as the water found on Earth? Scientists are still studying that. Mars has its waterfalls. Examining images captured by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO, a geological wonder similar to a waterfall on Earth has been identified. There's just one difference, on Mars, the waterfall isn't made up of water but rather molten rock, also known as lava. Lava spews from four different points along a 30-kilometer diameter crater in the Tharsis volcanic province, resembling a waterfall. This occurs because lava behaves like water, but it flows at a much slower rate due to being thicker than water and more susceptible to temperature changes. The island caught NASA's attention, which observed its development expecting it to submerge shortly after forming under the waters, but that didn't happen. Now, the space agency believes the island will remain submerged for several years before finally emerging. This peculiar interest in a terrestrial island is explained by the following reason, the emergence of the island can provide insight into how the surface water on Mars, Mars had oceans millions of years ago, it could have altered the shapes of the planet Mars. For instance, the island was initially unstable, continually losing parts to the ocean. It only became stable when its foundation solidified as salt water reacted with volcanic dust. Did something similar happen on Mars? Scientists say this is how the terrestrial features of Mars were created. They started off quite liquid and unstable but gradually solidified, 